What up? It's always a pleasure to have you stop by. Got another topic I want to cover today. I call it Matrix Dodging. And it's not a hard one. It's all about timing, using cover items properly. Overall, I'd say it's about having accurate intel for environmental cognizance. So acute observation of the enemy as well as sound giveaways from weapons and objects are involved here and are not limited to just lasers and trains either. It also includes having speed recognition of those objects as well as being familiar with the max velocity of character movements and I'm talking about one's awareness of the time and distance constraints whenever an opponent chooses a specific shooting technique or decides to do a weapon switch out or bounce mid-battle. A roll or even roadie running in a specific direction because they all dictate how fast they can fire off another round at us and give us that cue to do a dodge maneuver at the perfect time to get out of the path of fire and behind cover. Our character's position is the easiest way to tell whether we are safe and we're behind an object where the toes of the avatar's feet or face are pointing. I mentioned this because it's, this is a third person shooter game and, it, and making ourselves a more difficult target to hit matters when sending rounds down range. Torque bowls and ambires give us that chance to time our shots correctly since they make an audible revving noise so it becomes a game of like whack of the mole when we pop up and down luring them to consume their their power weapon ammo and diminishing their chances to aid their friendlies in battle that's where the support weapons come into play and where the shotgun gets put away until someone approaches us for a close quarters battles we should always be using support to main anyway which I'm probably gonna make another video about that one to prove it to you guys how it becomes efficient in battle uh, to be able to use all our resources. We also mustn't forget about the fast response times that it would take for us to have the lead on superior eye and hand coordination, which in most scenarios will likely involve a combination of a slight bot walk in order to reduce the chance for error when the process of a wall or object selection occurs and we go for that reach dodge at whatever degree it takes to accomplish successfully and where the rolls are fine as long as one's timing of them happen with a strategic approach according to those sound cues or avatar physical movements and limitations of the opposing team. The maximum fire rate of the Nasher is always another way to be able to tell whether a shot may be incoming our way where we must react so quickly to ensure that we take that crouch seat on the ground behind cover in the most probable moment where we would be taking a shot. Gears has always been about seeking out one's vulnerable positions during any actions, whether firing or taking cover. The one technique that complements the Nasher fire rate dodge approach is the forward dodge, which is very similar to the dodge shot and it's just as fast, only it's not about the 3 or 9 o'clock, it's about seeking cover to our 12. Now stationary targets, they gotta be quickly recognized because the longer we take to identify them, the sooner we are to respawning. Every second counts, and the best possible way to dodge them is using either the dodge shot or the side roadie run techniques due to forcing the player to make harder corrections. If we were to forward shot or roadie run forward, the probability of taking damage is still high due to our avatars' huge bodies and the telegraphed readable momentum we give as we dip our heads downward. Not only will the stationary target be easy to read, but that scope light that illuminates when these snipers aim in will most likely be the confirmation of us being targeted by them, queuing up that necessary action for a dodge maneuver. For long distance barrier battles, suppressive fire is a must, and the support weapons, such as pistol or lancer, are an absolute go-to and it becomes a game of mole support shooting where we become the moles that pop up and down to cause distraction and damage to an opposing player to ensure that they diminish their power weapon rounds and overall reduce their ability to aid their friendlies for cover fire. The key thing to survive longer in these scenarios is being able to time ourselves with letting go of that hard aim and successfully switch up that hemisphere that we are shooting from. It forces, again, the player to make a harder correction and breaks their aim by making ourselves unpredictable as far as where our head will pop out from. Hence the shooting technique name I gave it, Whack-A-Mole. When in close quarters with Nasher users, the X slash shooting technique that I briefly covered in the last video 
is just another way to break that predictability of our avatar positions just after firing around since it's the combination of a juke shot where we do a hard face to the left or right and follow through with a swing or a curve shot and making it a flat X in the center during the process. Other times we are in close quarters engagements and our adversaries will have that guardian angel support. That's where the sound cues and probable moments during battles aid us in being able to dodge just on time and multitask successfully. Gear should always be looked at as a 2v1 game for this reason because 1v1s are actually pretty rare in the multiplayer battlefield and becomes a scenario where 1v1 manipulation is created by luring players into their battle buddy upper hand schemes and breaking them. I mentioned rolling at the beginning saying it was okay however this move is really tricky and risky because slopes really only make it possible to fully cloak ourselves whenever there's that cover nearby and there's crossfire support on the opposing team then chances are we're still gonna be in the line of fire and that's why I recommend using a side roadie run just afterwards if we ever do a roll dodge to increase our chances of survival and again becoming an erratic target that is not easily readable by telegraph cubes. There are other times where the matrix dodge involves rear roadie running and it's the same thing moving away from the predict predictable position that our targets would assume we would be at going for death sphere docking if that opportunity arises to quickly dispose of them and reduce battle buddy aid. Now weapon swapping is also one of those consistent speed maneuvers like Nash or fire rates that we would have to use to our advantage to be able to dodge on time and reduce our chances of taking any damage. Usually taking damage in the first place is not a way to panic initially but to use to our advantage because of the distance our enemies will close up afterward. As long as we fire back for counter shots it reduces their shot damage towards us and their idea of what our life bars truly are at at the moment when we receive fire. Yep, that's all I got. See you on the next video.